It's called Global Preventive Medicine. The Earth is the patient now, and we're all physicians to the patient. We're here to serve, and we can save the world. Close down all those reactors now with solar and wind and geothermal. Forget about all the data and the figures and stuff. Listen to your intuition and you'll know what you've got to do. Dr. Helen Caldicott has been featured by CNN, The New York Times, CBC, Democracy Now!, 60 Minutes, and C-SPAN. When Helen speaks, many people make contributions large and small to the organization. The last two chapters of this book are very exciting because they give you the prescription for survival. Five, twenty-five, a hundred thousand dollars to the institute to support Helen and the work that she does ending the nuclear age. I don't say things that are inaccurate; otherwise, I would be deregistered. I mean, you, doctors can't lie. The doctors have been told by the superiors not to tell patients that their symptoms are related to radiation. This is the biggest medical to conspiracy cover up the and cover-up in the radiation. history of medicine, George. I don't think you could dismiss the UN Scientific Committee as being part of the nuclear industry. I don't think you can dismiss the very yes, large I could. amount of data yes, I could. on the. Sorry, you're saying you would dismiss the UN Scientific Committee as being part of the nuclear industry? Yes, let me tell you, George. Wow. Then the mind yeah. boggles. Where does this end? If, the if, mind does boggle. Them and the UN Scientific Committee and the IAEA and I mean, I mean, who else is involved in this conspiracy? We need to know. I'm testifying at your Darlington hearing soon. What am I going to say? You're all fools. What do you think you're doing? I mean, you all need psychoanalysis. These are all the elements in a reactor. She's testified before multiple government panels on the safety of nuclear power. If we move to uh, renewables in a big way, yeah. but you would not be able to have the kind of power um, yes, you that, would. that we have now. Oh, yes, you I would. I do think that we'd have to... Yes, you would. To smelt aluminum or to make aluminum, it requires huge amounts of energy. We've got to stop using aluminum cans. That's just crazy. And all this frozen food is just obscene too. We shouldn't be freezing food. When I was a kid, there was no frozen food. We did all right. You know, in the winter, it's so hot inside, you have to strip. The thermostat should be lowered. How many use paper towels in the kitchen? Yeah, you're allowed to use paper to wipe your bottoms. That's all. I like living the way I live, and I, I live fairly modestly. We live in a small house. I drive an 18-year-old Saturn. <laughs> you know, so we're fairly frugal, but I'm still an American, so that means I use vast amounts of resources no matter how frugal I am. When you're in the plane, the hostess hands you a drink with a bloody bit of, you know, a tree beside it. I don't need that paper serviette. It just becomes more and more increasingly difficult uh, to, to cut out the real big things, to be honest with you. As you walk from room to room, turn off your lights. <laughs> it's easy to turn off the lights and to uh, turn down the heat and or don't use the air conditioning at all. But then you quickly run into the idea that, you know, am I not going to fly to that conference? Uh, am I going to ride a bike to, you know, the grocery store? We've got to stop. Do not, never, never use it. You don't need all this electrical gadgetry. Turn them all off. Every time you walk into one of those doors and it goes in front of you, that's powered by electricity. Cover the place with windmills. It's what we've got to do if we want to keep using electricity. Otherwise, we have to stop using electricity. And think about it, Mozart wrote by candlelight and so did Shakespeare, so the human race has lived for a very long time without electricity. We've lived and survived for three million years without electricity. Well, what's wrong with candlelight? That's right. Dr. Helen Caldicott's prescription of a candlelit future and how it resonates with her audience brings to mind a classic Penn and Teller demonstration of how receptive people can be to fear-mongering. Can I get you guys to sign a petition? What for? For uh, banning dihydrogen monoxide. Oh yeah, I'll start there. Thank you very much. Our petition woman was getting signatures left and right. We're talking hundreds. It causes a lot of urination, um, vomiting. Yeah, I'm can even cause... with it. Oh, okay. That's dihydrogen monoxide. Water.
Uh, this is a petition for dihydrogen monoxide. What it is is it's a chemical that is found now in reservoirs and in lakes. Pesticides, different kind of companies are using this. And she's not going to lie or even stretch the truth. Not at all. She's just going to talk about what water is and what it does with the vocabulary and tone of environmental hysteria. Styrofoam companies, nuclear, nuclear companies. And now when they use it in pesticides, when we're washing our fruit and things like that, it's not coming out. It causes excessive sweating, excessive urination. And it's in the grocery stores and in our baby's food and stuff like that. We don't know if they thought, but they signed. There we are. If you saw a petition being circulated warning the dangers of dihydrogen monoxide, how would you alert the signees to its utter stupidity? Of course you'd just say, dihydrogen monoxide is water. That would end it right there. But what if you couldn't say that? This is crazy. You are sitting on top of a nuclear weapon. Because there is no common sense about what nuclear power is or isn't. You can have the word nuclear without the word bomb. There's only decades of fear-mongering. Whatever they put this waste in, it's so hot, will start to disintegrate within 10 years. You could cite some health studies and statements made by experts in the lucrative field of dihydrogen monoxide. You want us to put water on the crops? Yes. Water. But you would be considered suspect. Just a shill for big dihydrogen monoxide. I think this might be Gatorade or something. I was just looking for some regular water. You mean like in the toilet? What for? No, just to, to, to drink. <laughs> Everyone knows the safe alternative is Brondo energy drink. Good for your body, great for growing crops. Today's discussion around nuclear power is a lot like trying to debunk such a petition without using the word water. Water, like out the toilet? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be out of the toilet, but, but yeah, that's the idea. People are accustomed to decades of barely competitive nuclear power, accustomed to the message that nuclear waste is a lurking danger, and people have been convinced that a nuclear accident will kill more people than a single day's worth of fossil fuel air pollution. So solar, solar, not, not nuclear. nuclear. Sponsored by the Will Heat Institute. Yeah, no problem. Know. Yeah. You don't need a furnace, just have solar panels. This is the cynicism of the fossil fuel industry. When I've spoken to women's groups, none of them knew how bad coal was. They didn't know it killed people. If you add up all fossil fuel combustion in the United States, just from power plants, the fine particulates alone kill 13,000 people a year. WHO says only 56 people died at Chernobyl. However, the New York Academy of Science has translated 5,000 papers from Russian. The Chernobyl study done by the New York Academy of Sciences. A book called Chernobyl by the National Academy of Science. Produced by the New York Academy of Sciences. According yeah. to the New York yeah. Academy of Science. In no sense did the New York Academy of Sciences commission this work, nor by its publication do we intend to independently validate claims made. The translated volume has not been peer-reviewed by the New York Academy of Sciences or by anyone else. Now, when the National Academy of Sciences put it out, there were pro-nuclear people who are very strong, probably sociopaths. They discredited it. George Monbiot once deferred to Caldecott on matters of nuclear power and radiation. After the Fukushima disaster and a discussion with Caldecott on Democracy Now!, the biggest medical to conspiracy cover up the and cover-up in the by radiation. history of medicine, George. Mombayot wrote, The anti-nuclear movement to which I once belonged has misled the world about the impact of radiation on human health. The claims we made were ungrounded in science, unsupportable when challenged, and wildly wrong. We have done other people and ourselves a terrible disservice. Helen Caldicott, the world's foremost anti-nuclear campaigner, has made some striking statements about the dangers of radiation. I asked for sources. Caldicott's response has profoundly shaken me. None were scientific publications. None contained sources for the claims she'd made. George Monbiot published our email exchanges on The Guardian. How dare he? 
So stupid. That's revolting, little man. So after Fukushima, he's become pro-nuclear. He's either got a cerebral tumor or he's had a psychotic breakdown. That's my clinical diagnosis. I've listened to a lot of Caldecott while editing this video. Is he being paid? I do wonder. Something, something fishy's going on. She says more crazy things than I can possibly include without giving this video an R rating. In our town in Falmouth, there was a presentation made at another Unitarian meeting house. Yeah. And it convinced a lot of people in the audience that thorium was a, a safer alternative. Who presented that? Who? Two people who... From where? Well, they were both connected to the nuclear industry in one way or the other. But they were very convincing. Yeah, they're idiots. These people are mad. Now let me tell you about thorium. To produce electricity, you have to reprocess, like melt the fuel, then make the fuel rods with uranium-233 and put them in a reactor. It's economically totally out of this question. So these men are mad. There's some sort of psychotic element in the nuclear industry, the testosterone and hormone receptors in the brain and behavior and sex comes into it. All these men operate from their reptilian mid-brains and use their left cortex to justify what their emotions want them to do and a lot of it's about testosterone i'm fed up with testosterone yeah! e equals mc squared is a substitute probably for male well i say it erection and ejaculation um and they like it and it's, it's this sort of energy that really grabs them what you're about to hear is the least crazy sounding thing dr helen caldicott has ever said that people living near nuclear reactors are more likely to get leukemia. This is either a scary thing to hear, causes excessive sweating, excessive urination, or a terrifying thing to hear, and it's in the grocery stores and in our baby's food, depending on whether or not you have children. Germany did a, a classic study of children under the age of five living less than 5k kilometers from 16 reactors their incidence of leukemia was more than double normal. That study was then duplicated by the French. So they don't need to do another study. The first one looked at leukemia rates among German children living within five kilometers of any operating nuclear reactor. Where 17 incidents of leukemia would have been expected, researchers instead found 37. The second study looked at leukemia rates among French children living within five kilometers of operating reactors, where seven cases of leukemia would have been expected. Researchers instead found 14. In both studies, childhood leukemia rates very close to reactors are doubled. Also, in both studies, researchers strongly cautioned against assuming the increase in leukemia was from any sort of radioactive plant emission. How is it the researchers involved in both studies saw a doubling of leukemia rates near the reactors and then argue against any sort of radioactive plant emission as a cause? Wouldn't anyone like to know? And those two studies are classic studies. They don't need to do any more studies. QED, it's proven. Both the French and the German studies measured leukemia rates against distance from nuclear power plants. The French study followed the German one and so attempted to address some confounding factors that the German study lacked data for. The French study used two geographic models. One was simply distance to the reactor, as the German study had done. The second model incorporated wind direction to more closely model where any emissions from the reactor would be distributed. The excess cases of leukemia disappeared when using this more accurate weather model meaning the vast majority of leukemia cases were not downwind from the reactors as one might expect. This curious finding was then explored further in a third study which saw elevated leukemia rates where nuclear power plants were planned but had not yet been constructed. There was not yet any radioactive material on those sites. They don't need to do any more studies. It's proven. Nuclear power plants may be located close to cities and large population centers, but they're not dropped in the middle of housing units. Most frequently, in Europe and the UK, they're put in the industrial zones of small towns, on land previously used for other purposes. 
The German studies increase in leukemia rates were all clustered where a chemical factory had once operated and later the nuclear power plant had been built. So I don't need to do any more studies. The vast majority of scientific research finds no increase in cancer or leukemia is caused by nuclear power. Note again that researchers of both the German and French studies caution specifically against presuming that any emission from the nuclear power plants was the cause. So what does Caldecott do? She tells her audience that the reports are evidence of exactly that. We have lived and survived for three million years without electricity. We can laugh about her prescription of a candlelit future. We've got to stop. Do not, never, never use it. You don't need all this electrical gadgetry. Turn them all off. Television, DVD, oh, uh, 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 electric carving knives, all the flashing lights. But it comes at the end of a terrifying diatribe. These look like thalidomide babies. Do you remember when pregnant women took thalidomide? Between mischaracterizing good science and regurgitating bad science and just flat out making stuff up, this is the nuclear fallout released by the Australian Radiation Service. It's an absolutely wicked, wicked, wicked industry which kills people. These people should be tri tried like the Nazi war criminals were at Nuremberg. And I'm fed up with them. It's not until you are scared out of your wits that she suggests we should switch from a clean source of lighting to one of the very dirtiest. If a woman who repeatedly tells audiences easily refutable falsehoods there must be a law that people can't lie. People should be sued. Doctors can't lie. We would be deregistered. I would be deregistered. If I lied about medicine, I would be deregistered. And they haven't sued me. So I'm right. If she can motivate people to protest nuclear power, then anyone can. Use sort of descriptive terminology that will get Mr. and Mrs. Joe Sixpack sitting at home watching The Simpsons and stuff. You know, the, oh my God, what about my children? Here's the argument for conventional nuclear power as heard by Joe Sixpack. This mysterious form of energy, which brings you feelings of distrust, if not outright fear, is in fact very safe. There's nothing to worry about here. The situation is under control. We plan to store nuclear waste in Yucca Mountain, even though it's perfectly safe in a dry cask. The waste was moved to cask storage from cooling pool, even though it was perfectly safe in the cooling pool. Fukushima radiation didn't kill a single person, despite everything you've heard. And utilities are shutting down nuclear reactors one after the other for non-safety related issues, despite all the money ratepayers spent to build them in the first place. I think this is an insurmountable communications challenge. There is a logical argument for conventional nuclear power, but it simply isn't enough to have an argument which makes logical sense. Not anymore. Not after 50 years of communications neglect. Up and at them. 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 Up and at them.